Looks like it's working. Close that door up there. All right, so I'm just gonna. It says good connection. We'll see about that. So I'm just going to pause this preview. I don't need no preview. people what's up all right all right just looking at some stuff here hi everyone i think my microphone should be good if the audio is too low or anything just let me know Everybody. Thanks for hanging. I'm gonna do my best to uh, actually work here to hopefully produce some um, useful insights instead of just uh, ah, I'm streaming and doing whatever it takes to be able to stream. actually find some stuff that's going to work for me here. Hello, hello. Hello to whatever 39. M. Termer, Xander, what's up? Ivory Black, Gal Dragon, hello, 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 everyone. Hi, 24. What's up? You know, I need to note down what I need to do here as well. Shades. Need normal. Need types. We need wind. And some. there for me so 
So what goes on, people? How's everybody's art journeys? Do you ever choose to work in a more silhouette shape carving kind of way rather than sketching out the figure? Uh, sometimes, depending on the subject matter. Some things lend themselves to that approach and then others do not. Are these streams going to be a thing or is this just something you're doing to try? Well, they have been a thing. I mean, I've gone through periods where I streamed like every day for five hours a day for five months, you know, like <laughs> they have been a thing uh, over different times. They're just not a regular thing right now. But streaming has been a thing in my life. since you used to stream on Twitch. Yeah, I mean, I, I always liked streaming. I wish I could do it more. It's really just, um, I couldn't possibly make it super regular with the amount of work that I have to do. It's like on most days of the week, I work all day on client work or I have to teach my class. And then, um, and then on the weekend I have to uh, help my students and do my mentorship. So, you know, like this week, today is the only day of the whole week where I have some time that I can work on a project for myself. And that's really only because my like wife is occupied with her homework. It's like if she was available, I'd be running around doing something fun with her. Finally been able to create a safe space for myself on an emotional in which I could finally draw something whilst enjoying the process. Oh, that's great to hear, whatever, 39. Fantastic. Is it true that some people are line people and others are tonal people? How can you develop proficiency in both lines and shapes? I tend to think that there are line people and tone people, and that is to say, uh, tone people I would consider like shape and form people that's not true because you could also just be like a very graphically minded like color person as well uh and i think it just comes down to different people's proclivities um but you can be whatever you want and balance out you just need to be aware of where your natural tendencies lie and then sort of add on the stuff that you don't naturally think about like for me, my natural tendency is always to think in form and like the way something occupies space. And it's not natural for me to think in terms of how something sits on the page. You know, I get very into the like illusionistic, like what makes this thing real in my mind thinking. And then I need to add on after the fact, um, or train formations of a graphic elements of a design or something that I'm working on, how it sits on the page, how it presents sort of the, the 2D part of it. What 
what is the biggest advice you give a beginner except just doing fundamentals? Um, if you are doing your fundamentals and they're not killing you, like you're just enjoying doing it, then hunt for your joy in all of this. That's my big to uh, all beginners. The thing when you're a beginner is that you haven't tried nearly enough things to know what you actually, um, I'm going to use the word love in heavy scare quotes about art. That is to say the part of it that like no matter what happens, no matter how much of a failure you are, no matter what goes wrong, the of art will always keep you coming back, you know? As a beginner, it's very hard for you to know what that is for you. And it's part of almost every artist's journey to discover that for yourself. And um, inevitably, you can put it off for years and years and years and years and lie to yourself and think that like, oh, you know, I, I just need to be a success. It's about status. I need to be on the big projects. I need the job. It's like, go through that if you need to go through that. But inevitably, everybody needs to um, come to the other side of the realization and find what, what was really in it for them the whole time. So instead of putting it off, just start with it early, you know? What's your background? Looks like you moved. I did not. Well, uh, my uh, apartment is having some renovations and fixes done right now. So uh, I'm out at my in-laws place. They were nice enough to uh, put up my wife and I while everything gets patched up. And, uh, you know, for, for lockdown times in this crazy era that we live in, look at that, a backyard, as opposed to where I live, where, um, forget a backyard, there's not a, there's not a patch of grass for a mile in every direction, so, <laughs> very different environment. City life. I'm not enjoying doing fundamentals at all. Dude, you gotta enjoy it. You gotta find a way to enjoy it. Uh, ones that you can't find a way to enjoy, don't worry about them so much and don't let other people, and especially not Rand Internet, tell you that you need to do them if you wanna do the kind of work that you wanna do. It's like, really? Really? Why would, why would a fundamental like rotate in space if you hate doing it and you have no way to like see how that's going to apply to the kind of work that you want to do? Um, why is it worth your time to slam your head against that forever? It, it's not. You have to be a little thoughtful about it, right? You have to be honest to yourself about like, you can't have a dream of drawing cars, for example, and lie to yourself and tell yourself that you you don't need to know how to rotate an ellipse in space, right? Every car has four wheels on it that are ellipses in space. So you got to be honest with yourself about that stuff. But, um, you know, if you're confident enough and uh, open-minded enough, you could also find a way to be great at illustrating cars where the wheels are kind of whatever, you know? Everything's possible in this world. It's going to be a, a tough road to hoe. You're going to be fighting an uphill battle on that for a long time, but it is, of course, possible. And then there's some future there where people will be like, oh, yeah, that guy, he's so good at drawing cars, he doesn't even draw the wheels. You know? That could become a thing. You know, I always have to, I always feel the need to mention these things because it is, of course, true that it is possible to in your career and with the kind of work that you want to do. It's just that, but we, I also have to state that most people would not actually be willing in the work to figure that out if they knew what it looked like. Have you ever had the friend that dogmatically claims they are terrible at drawing and could never improve? Have you tried to convince them otherwise, if so? Um, I, most of my art friends were, um, 
well, I should say drawing friends, like friends who are really into drawing. Most of those friends and peers that I had in my life came when I was in uh, college. So they were there to improve. So no, I never really had much of that. They maybe went through spots where they were like, God, I'm not good and I'm just not willing to do what it takes to get good, but they all knew it was possible to improve. shade Let's rub some value over this guy hi Nihal what's up I am doing just fine thank you for asking trust me if I am sitting here drawing I am doing just fine had some feeling that I maybe want to present the idea that the shades are um, I want to try to find I'm not sure what I want to do yet but I want to try to find some way to make the shades um, surface say something about them I'm imagining maybe uh, some that are like, look like bronzes, you know, like sculptures. I feel like that, uh, that alludes to our thinking of what classical work is. I think that we think of something like Dante's Inferno as a classic, as classical. So I think that fits thematically with that. Um, it alludes to the sort of um, Italian Renaissance era. Well. Dante was Dark Ages, but uh, sort of the lineage of Italian art. But also I think it says something about um, sort of the limbo that they're in, that they, they're they now not what they used to be, you know? Now they're sort of trapped in an unchanging eternity. They're like a sculpture of what they once were now. They're not a person who's going to have like a dynamic life now where they go through an arc, they're just going to suffer one torture eternally and forever forever reiterate that doom so I'm wondering if maybe making some allusions either having them look like a bronze or look like a marble or something like that could help me show that just visually we'll see I'm going to present a lot of ideas hopefully to my collaborator and we will powwow on all of that Oh, Xander, you're going to sculpt some figures soon? That's fantastic. Do do that. I personally found sculpture uh, helped me a lot. What the? Oh, come now. Uh, that's right. That's why I have Layer Factory. Thank you. Booyah. Hold on to that. Oh. Ah, that's fine. I can work with that. A more sad green there. Is that going to help me get the bronze feeling across though? Oh, 
I'm mixing every step in the process while I look for ideas here on these things for better or worse. I just get so few opportunities to work on this stuff that uh, when I get the chance, I want to throw out all the things I've been thinking about. Ivory asks, how do you make your sketches look more presentable if they're always messy without making them look too stiff and unnatural? Um, well, there's a lot to be said about presenting um, groups of sketches. Like um, if you have a bunch of messy sketches, you know, presenting them as a group with other messy sketches and making it clear like I'm looking for ideas here and all that, that context is valuable and that really sets a different expectation in people's minds. Really the, the easiest way for me, I can't speak for all artists, but just doing a second pass, just doing another layer, getting a piece of tracing paper, like it actually doesn't take that long to do a second pass on things. It's just um, all you really need to fight against is your, your not laziness, but um, there's like a desire to just not rehash something you've already done. I get that a lot. You know, I, I like just, I'm always just like new, new, new. Let's see what the next one's going to look like. It, it might be the best thing we've ever done. You know, I get caught up on that. So um, you just need to fight against that. But uh, doing a second pass is remarkably quick. Um, not difficult. It's faster than the first pass. And really it only takes like a cursory second pass to make something look like 300% more cleaned up. So for my money, that's where the most bang for the buck is. You just need to find a way to keep it fun for yourself so that you're not bored. Um, the best thing I found for that is try to adopt the mindset that tracing what you already did when you do the second pass, you are redrawing it, right? Even if you're going right over it, you're just doing a completely new second drawing, like change things, edit angles, find new corners, like do parts of it completely new, you know? Steven Silver talks about that a lot. Just uh, never be tracing, you're always drawing. And that really goes for every step of your process. It's very important to always be drawing instead of getting tricked into thinking that now you're just doing the surface effect that you're going for. Give me one second, I'm gonna turn on a light. It's getting a little dark in here. Nihal asks, Steven, are you working on something? Yes, I am. I'm working on my Dante's Inferno project right now. I am looking for some ideas for this project. trying to get some base design work out. And that I can run past my bud Geonapkill and see what we like and what we don't like. What about you? Are you working on something? My hope is always that everyone who's in here on these streams is 
drawing as well. Oh, one of those lights that I turned on is like right in my eyes, making it a little hard to see. Ooh, go on, get out of here. Is that any better? Might need to wear a baseball cap. My lights are not in an ideal position because of something else that I have set up to be recorded, so they're kind of like pointing at me. Any new gum roads coming up? I'm about I am about halfway through editing now a uh, a shading video. Could have been doing that today, but gotta keep up the actual uh, production of art and not just uh, doing all of the necessary um, editing and other work that producing art. I was gonna have his legs kind of like trail off into some sort of smoky thing so that actually that's probably still a good idea because if I just draw if I just draw his legs like down to his feet it will read as a bronze like as an actual statue that's supposed to be on like a plinth or something like that that could get around that but if I have him sort of dissolve into fog that will I think that will do us better here because then there will be no way to interpret him as an actual solid object we will see that might be a problem that uh, who knows you know as we figure out the design of this stuff that might be a problem that forces us to not go for the uh presenting these guys with the sort of patina of a statue or something like that that might not work out because of considerations like that but that's the beauty of the design process who knows what will happen Currently drawing more of just chilling out, letting ideas happen kind of session. Excellent. Could I could perhaps bother you for a random drawing prompt of some time, of some of some kind? Can be anything. Um, I don't know. I don't. Uh, I think um, you know. I could give you some advice instead for stuff that you can. Um, I'm actually not a big fan of a completely like random like draw whatever like um you know <laughs> in in my most serious moods which is quite often um I, I would more say like uh you know if you're looking if you're a little confused you don't know what to draw and it's just whatever like instead of a random problem like go write down feeling and what you've been struggling with lately and um make art based on that you know I don't want to tell you like draw Pokemon number 345. I don't know which one it is. Have fun. It's like, yeah, well, you could do that. It is great. You can get a good drawing out of it, but I hope you 
is this? Um, 7,000, please. Take it up to 7,000, please. I love how you just smile at problems. You've got to. You have got to. Problems will never stop. And the multiplying villainies of nature will always swarm upon us. You don't want a life without problems anyway. Better to treat them as friends. Besides, especially when you're designing, like, if you're constantly finding problems, you know, um, that's a sign that you're thinking of something tough and that you're actually designing a lot of the times. So nothing wrong there. As long as it's in balance, right? It's ob that's obviously different than always finding problems in the sense of, um, oh, I suck, I'm not good at this. Uh, uh, I shouldn't be doing this. Those are, that's a different kind of problem that is not useful. Finding problems actually about what you're trying to be creative about, no, that's good. Hey, Max. What's up? Is there any reason as to why you have the 72 and not 300? Um, someone can, can correct me if I'm wrong, but unless you're printing things, like to me, this, the, the, what people incorrectly call DPI, dots per inch, which is a printing thing, as opposed to PPI, pixels per inch, it, doesn't matter, right? Like truly, like it's, this is what matters, just the raw pixels that you're at. Like, unless you're printing things in books or on paper, it, it's 7K and that's it, you know? I think there is consider, you know, you need to keep in mind that like uh, most, like I think most monitors are 72 DPI and then once you start sending things to phones, that gets different. Um, I think phones, like an iPhone has like 180 something pixels per inch or like 200 something pixels per inch because it has a super dense screen. But um, it just doesn't really matter, you know? You just need to make sure that uh, you're at the right resol pixel resolution for the product that you're shipping. I never print things though, so. And, you know, I have prints available in my printing company. They don't ask for uh, things to be at a certain DPI, even though they're printing things. They just ask you to have a raw, high minimum resolution. They do the rest. That's fine for a little half hour, guys. So let's look at uh, another dude. You know, this guy wound up having the idea that this guy has, so I don't really need him anymore. Let's do a new sketch. We'll come back to this guy later. See, I don't, I don't want them to, um, because this project is meant to be realized in VR, and it's going to be sculpted with very um, a very form-focused approach. I don't want this to just become pure special effect where the shades are like transparent spirits made of light or something like that. Like I do want them to feel uh, solid. have to look at my references and be more specific about what makes something look like a bronze. Once I get closer, like it needs to have a, 
more powerful, juicy, specular reflection like that, and then has really nice soft to hard fall offs bronzes. Does stuff like that and like that. I'm gonna have to look for something like that. That already is starting to do it ever so slightly if you zoom out. So we'll come back and take a second pass at stuff like that. But I don't wanna just dive down and do that forever on that one guy. I need to look for other ideas. So I need to, I'm trying to find the normal look of the shades, which I am leaning towards the same disembodied spirit over and over again. I want them to reflect the body types of who they were in life. So I need to look at like some male, some female, some thin, some fat, some old, some young. Like I wanna get all the different, I wanna get some indication of all the different body types in there. And then, um, and then those are present in the mains that uh, I'm working on first, but then there is a specific group of shades that are being blown about by the wind so I need to design them to be wind blown. And I have ideas for how I'm gonna like stretch them out and edit their anatomy to do that. So that'll be a whole second thing, but I don't wanna design that first and then find out that I wished non wind blown shades had some super special thing about them that then wouldn't be represented in the wind blown version. So there's a lot to think about there. Also, I need to think about like, are they, Patina, like do they some of them just look like regular people so that the hero ones that Dante interacts with do they just look like regular people like do they have like flesh color and all that I don't know let's see mm -mm -mm. Gallagher asks, any tips for leaning more into drawing what I'm feeling I suppose my art is almost always just trying to make something cool um, making something as cool as fine. Or oh, it is. It is. It definitely is. Um, like, <laughs> you know, when I'm, when I'm streaming or making videos or anything like that, like I, I do by necessity need to lean into sort of, um, you know, uh, how I really feel about these things. So I'm always more inclined to be a little extreme about that stuff. Um, but it, I, I need to be really clear that, uh, of course, it's fine to just do something cool, you know, like that, that is always fine. I spend a lot of my time just doing things that are supposed to be just cool. Um, but I'm just trying to also um, remind people that there is more to it than that. There is more, not more to it, but there's more available, which uh, doesn't really get talked about in our circles very much at all, which is ridiculous because it does get talked about in a lot of other art circles. And it's like, why are we pretending we're not like them? Anyway, I have an agenda just like anybody else. So, you know, that's why I spread it, reminding people to like look deeper and stuff like that. Um, but yes, it's always fine to draw something cool. And uh, when it comes to leaning more into what you feel with your art, um, it's, it, it's super personal. Uh, I think writing helps a lot of people, not everybody, but I think writing helps a lot of people figure out stuff like that. Um, I would advise you to do a good amount of writing to figure out some stuff. Um, it really, like, like for me, I'm interested in the things that I'm... For me, I don't feel confused as to why I'm interested in the things I'm interested in. Do you get what, does that make any sense at all? Like, I know exactly why I like Dante's Inferno. You know, I know exactly why I love Paradise Lost, right? It's not, it's not like, oh, I just love it and it's so cool and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I know exactly why I love it. At least I think I do. And it all pertains to my life experiences and my psychology and... Um, deeper interests that I can't explain and stuff like that. And that makes me super motivated about it and more interested and more thoughtful. Um, and I think sort of starting that discussion with yourself about why do I really like the things that I like um, 
even if you're blowing smoke up your own ass, right? Like even if you're barking up the wrong tree completely, even if you're just making this this stuff up for yourself and you like can't ever really prove that that's why you like anything, at least you have an answer, you know? So much about just being opinionated. It's really important to be opinionated um, because opinions, strong opinions, are stuff that you can actually latch onto in drawings. And not being opinionated and not knowing why you're doing things leaves you kind of wishy-washy and unable to commit and out of energy and tired and confused. And then you never freaking make anything. Um, it's better to feel strongly about things, in my experience, uh, to keep going for as long as I have and at the energy level that I have. You know, if, if I didn't like, whoa, like really care, like a, like a lot, if I didn't feel that way, um, there's no way I would have kept doing this. I've had times that are so hard and, you know, crises of faith for the art journey that were so unbelievably all encompassing that if I didn't really care like a lot, a lot, a lot, of course I would have quit. Of course I would have stopped. Any reasonable person would, you know, if you didn't really care, I would have stopped a hundred times. Um, but because I'm, I feel super connected with the things that I'm doing, I don't. Was that even an answer to your question? I don't know. I'm gonna try to, I'm looking at some of Rodin's more impressionistic uh, bronzes over here on my little reference board and I'm that like are missing limbs. So I'm thinking I'm gonna try to break a limb off of this uh, older body shade design. See if I like that or not. It feels like it could work. Like, you know, if, if there are these, there, there's something to be said about having a, a big thing that shows you that these shades are missing something, right? That it's not just a new body that they have in hell. It's like, they're not what they were, a big limb or big chunks of themselves. legs are too long makes it feel like um people tend to stoop and get smaller as they get older so want a little bit more squished proportion there how long have i been on this project seems like quite a while now yeah i've done dante's inferno inspired stuff for a long time um this particular of it where I'm like working, moving towards working with someone on it and it's being more structured within the last year. Xander says not into anything, not opinionated. Um, I don't want to disrespect um, invalidate your own personal experience um i don't want to um pretend that i know your mind better than you do uh, i never would um but just to give you some answer that's not like i don't know um i'm gonna dare to be utterly presumptuous and kind of gross and say that's bullshit man that's bullshit you are a complicated deep human being everybody is and you do have opinions. And if you feel like you're not opinionated and that you don't know, that is usually just like some level of, um, you don't want to admit to yourself what you're actually interested in, right? Like there's things in there that you're just like, that can't be me. There's no way that like that is what I'm interested in. And that means that that's where you've got to look, you know? There's no way you're going through life uninterested and like, oh, I don't have opinions and oh, whatever, everything's cool. Like, no way, fuck that, I don't. Maybe, but if you really were, you'd be like the one in a billion person who's actually like that. And then at that point, that could probably become a viewpoint and an opinion. It'd be like amazing to see art that truly encompasses the feeling of like, whoa, nothing is interesting. What a bland, unmystical, boring universe we live in. Whoa. I'd go give that a look. 
like, please, someone who wants to make art who's not interested or opinionated in anything. Like, what an oxymoron. Impossible. You got a lot to figure out. Just dig deeper, you know? Analysis of what makes you interesting things very important. Yep. Things do become a lot more obvious when you take the time to think. Connor's is always very good at triggering those kinds of growth moments to me. Oh, very good. Glad to hear. Webcam lagging? Oh, you fixed it. Yeah, I don't think it should be lagging. It does at higher resolutions, but I put the webcam itself on a lower resolution, so it should be fine. If it does become a problem, I can lower its res even more because I'm tiny on the screen, so it doesn't actually need to be at the res it's at. But my webcam does usually lag if I have it up at like 2K or 4K. Hi, Sean. What's up, man? Good to see you. How you doing, brother? Question, I know you are using Procreate on iPad, but have you tried Infinite Painter? I have, I have tried Infinite Painter. It's good. I was using it for a while when I was working, uh, when I was commuting to go work in studio uh, earlier in the year. Um, I, was, uh, I was using it to do like little subway paintings of people while I was jammed on the subway like this, just doing it on my phone. That was a lot of fun. It's pretty good for that. I think I, I could probably do most of what I do for work in Procreate. Um, I could probably do that in Infinite Painter too. The It might have changed since the last time I really was in there, but the only reason I don't use it for work is just that I don't like the um, the file system. I like that uh, I like that Procreate has like a nice, big, easy to navigate gallery because um, I have tons of files for work, lots of files, and I just need to be able to like flip through them and find things and preview them and stuff like that. Tharanga says, hey, bro, love how you're into meditation. Oh, that, uh, thank you, Tharanga. I'm glad to have you on board. Uh, I love that you're into whatever you're into. Isn't life so wholesome sometimes that you can just kind of like put out there what you're into and people will come out of the woodwork and be like, I love that you're into that. It's like, awesome, cool. I love that for you. some more softer transitions here. This is way too defined. Let this all smooth out quite a bit. I 
have them looking at us. Maybe I can, could I get a look like that? I feel like that would let me show an old head a little better. Maybe I could float his severed hand trying to block holy light or something like that. Hmm. Be considered. We'll think about that. There's an update coming. Version 7 for Infinite Painter should have been out two days ago, but they're still fixing some issues. We'll see what features it will bring. Yeah, I'd be interested to see what is up. The new version of uh, Procreate that came out last week has um, a function where you can uh, sketch. Um, I don't know if any of you have tried it, but it has a function now where you can sketch um, face masks for yourself, like uh, like filter style. And uh, that's super fun. Like, I don't know if you can share it or anything like that. I think it's just like, um, at least I couldn't find like a way to like output that as like a filter someone could actually open on their phone. Like, I think it's just like, a thing where if you're hanging out with people, you can open Procreate and be like, here, put on this mask that I made. But uh, it's good fun. It's so weird. I was mapping all sorts of my, my art to my head. darkening this receding leg because wherever the light's coming from it's going to get less light than that leg for sure trying to keep things pretty soft so that there's some chance that this character can feel old this does not feel right but that is specific enough like a portly old man transition from the external oblique into the front of the hip muscles there that uh i know i would just need to go find a good ref for that but we will just leave that as a big question mark for now nothing for a ref just for a sketch right now apply a little bit more of his Delta in there. Still have no idea Procreate doesn't have proper gradation tools similar to Photoshop. I think they just added one. I think that's another thing that was added on gradient maps with like knob control and all that. I haven't tried it yet, but. way the lips of the elderly curl under.
That looks okay for that annoying head angle. I really never make it easy on myself. get his head a little closer to his traps because you don't want old people to feel like their necks are too long like models or anything like that you want everything to feel stooped coming in prefer drawing on a display or a non-display tablet? I prefer drawing on a display tablet, like um, for straight drawing. I like to do that on my um, iPad. Um, for work like this, where I'm gonna take, rub some color and paint on stuff like super fast, I prefer to do that on a, uh, on a non-display tablet. I never liked the um, the Cintiqs. Every time I tried them, they never uh, they never did it for me. Too much of the work that I do in Photoshop and just in digital art in general is like not line work, you know? Like it's not straight line work, which is what the Cintiq is best for. And uh, it just gets so tired and fatigued, like always bent over the thing and so close to like this bright light bulb, you know? The, I like that the tablet lets you kind of have a nice ergonomic setup. Old people tend to be have a goodly amount of vascularity, so just letting that drive some of the lower arm here instead of getting into muscular anatomy too much. Smooth, no, I want to smooth out 
some of these drawing uh, landmarks that I left for myself because, you know, if I put darks like here and here, it's going to make them look ripped. Like he has really chiseled pecs and to get the old feeling, I want it to all be softened. The contrast hierarchy must be correct. Get some good moves in there. Hate those nipples. Too dark. Boop. For now. That'll do. Let's see what's up. Nihal asks, have you ever tried oil paints? Yes, many times. They're a blast. Max, are the people a part of your mentorships and more often than not pretty technically advanced artists? Do people ever pay you just to look at where they're at and give them homework? Um, looking at where they're at and giving them homework, uh, describes a lot of the, uh, of what goes on meeting to meeting in the mentorship. But, um, no, there's like a spread. Um, I would say most of the, um, most of the students that I have right now are not super technically minded. Um, they're, um, they're all at sort of different levels and they do all different kinds of things. I have students who only do digital work. I have students who only do traditional work, you know, people who work more impressionistically. Um, I have a student who basically just does like oil painting landscapes, you know, and you know, I only crit that. Then I have another student where it's just like straight entertainment design, design work. Um, I haven't had anybody just, um, I haven't had anybody, I don't think, who um, like just one glance at where they're at and then we haven't kept going, you know? You know, there's, there's plenty of people I've given like homework to just online, like over the years, just like off of a quick, like single communication we've had, um, where then they go off and do that for who knows as long as they can bear to do it but that's not really what the mentorship is the mentorship is more like um ongoing like focused help at least i hope it is i hope they feel the same way about it as i do but uh yeah it's more um it's bigger than just one thing it's like ducking it's weaving it's finding what's working right what's work what's not working out well making adjustments course correcting setting career goals and stuff like that. It's a good amount of fun, I'll tell you that. And a lot of work. I just just this week had to officially move it over to a uh, waitlist only because uh, it does take up a big amount of time and um, just with work it's like it's getting a little untenable to take on much more than uh, what I have now at all so it is officially on waitlist mode I can't like I can't risk taking on more than I can handle with work and then leaving my students feeling unhelped or anything like that I need to be able to give them my as much guidance as I can muster. So that could be a sketch for an old man shade. We can come back and This is the great thing about doing a project for yourself or with a uh, a collaborator who fucking rocks is that um, you can do your designs sort of um, for mood and feeling and like go for poses and 
weird things that often like you know if you were on a job you couldn't necessarily risk a pose like this to send to a modeler or something like that but you know when you're working with somebody who is really really good at what they do you can you can rest assured that they'll look in that and be like oh i know exactly what to do and they'll you know instead they'll fix all your problems <laughs> Let's look at a, maybe a really thin one, which I feel like the thin ones are like too expected for me. Like, um, my, my assumption right now is that when I do a thin one, I'm not gonna like it because uh, it's just gonna be like too much what you would expect from a impoverished shade in hell. You know, it's just gonna look too wayfish and all that. seems like a lot to handle yeah it is i mean it, it's a lot to handle because i you know i want to take it as you know i i do take it super seriously so it's not easy for me to like um it's not easy for me to make any like it's difficult to keep it in balance because i'm always going to want to help my students with absolutely everything they want help with and then i also just straight up teach a class which like aside from my mentorship like uh the art center class that i teach it's like i'm always available to them too you know that's a class of uh of 10 students and just i'm i'm on call for them for the whole semester so that adds a lot of teaching as well Can you tell what the project is about? Um, this is Dante's Inferno, which is a, an epic poem uh, written by Dante Alighieri, a Florentine who had a lot to say about Florence and God and hell and the mystical. Um, it's a classic, and uh, the project itself, um, I, I don't want to go into too many specifics about how it will get presented, but... Um, um, it's a collaboration between myself and Geo Napkill, and um, we uh, we are working on um, a particular early canto. I think it, it's the it's canto four. It's the second circle of hell, where um, you first see uh, Minos judging shades. That's where we're starting, and we're doing that. Uh, that's what I'm working on here. But it's really like to present that first area of hell requires a lot of just ground design work so it's really like it's really what i'm doing right now is figuring out design work for a vision of a lot of the basic elements like what does dante look like what does virgil look like what do um powerful demons in hell look like what do tortured shades look like in hell it's more those considerations right now Sorry, I'm just sliding some of my references around. I have a lot of uh, Rodin sculptures open on my reference board over my other screen. And I'm just looking for one that I thought would maybe be good for giving me a vibe for a thin one, but I don't know where it went. Maybe I didn't put it on here. Maybe I'm imagining something. These two should do fine. It's 
So I'm just gonna lean into the more typical here. So I'm just trying to get him thinner looking than this, which really has more like the body type of a Grecian sort of classic hero thing, which is fine by me because that's a lot of what um that uh, realm of mythology is a lot of what Dante encounters in the poem while he's down in hell. So uh, making them look the way the Greeks depicted themselves in their art would be perfectly thematically relevant, but we don't necessarily have to go that way. Let's make the rib cage really prominent. Getting a little heroic there already. I don't want that. Where am I going with this? Was I just going to do this? Screw that. That ain't it. Too heroic. Gabby Gonzalez says, hey Steven, wanted to say you're amazing. Oh, thank you. Your 10 minute drawing videos help me reconnect with my art in a different way and learn to be happy with what I do again. So yeah, thank you for drawing with me. Ah, very happy to hear that. A pleasure to be of service. Truly, truly a pleasure to be of service. I can imagine uh, no better thing in this world than helping drawing live comfortably in the hearts of others. I am doing my best to find more and more time to do that. see if I can get away with the knock need thing I don't know every time I tried it never works out but you know a brow bead and shade might be the one of the few opportunities where it's um, appropriate to look that messed up
Yep. How you doing? Uh, actually, that's probably fine. I think I'm going to bring this down. That looks slightly better. <laughs> Gonna exaggerate that rib cage popping out. Gonna kick back even further in my chair. Oh yeah. Is my dog out there? Oh, there she is. Right where she needed to be when I felt like checking up on her. Termer asks, are you stretching during drawing? Um, not right now. Sometimes. My, uh, my wrist and hand hurt quite often while I draw. Not hurt, but like they ache a lot when I draw because uh, I really put my hand through long marathons of drawing for like eight to nine hours straight for work. But um, I've never had it actually like give out on a sustain a wrist injury or anything like that it has been very kind to me so i do stretch it and stuff like that when it starts to hurt but um everything has been all right so far stretching the mind always stretching the mind while drawing that's for sure These arms feel too beefy because the, um, when things feel too beefy or not beefy enough, it's almost always these thicknesses at the joints. Like his wrist is similar, is like really not that far off from his leg. And it's just making it feel like, uh, he's just way too, he's not thin enough yet. Let's just exaggerate that and pull it back. Now his wrist looks like my wrist. That's a good sign. That means it'll be a truly sad wrist. Hey, Steven, glad to be here. Hey, Damien in the Den, good to see you. I've been meaning to thank you for your amazing content and drawing philosophy has helped me a lot to get through some tough times. Muchas gracias, Mr. Very happy to hear that. Thank you. I am uh, very, very happy to be of service. Very happy to help with the drawing piece. Uh oh, sun's coming in here now.
how dark is my camera getting? Let's take a look. Yeah, sorry for the definitely not ideal setup, but um, I'm not at home. So there's going to be just some amount of stuff that still needs to get parsed out. Actually, I don't know if I can fix it here. It probably will be non-ideal while I'm away from home, but um, I might be able to uh, get some curtains or something like that. I think that might be a start. There's curtains here behind me, but uh, if I cl they're super red, and uh, if I close them, it's just like everything gets completely inundated in like a blowing out red haze on the webcam. It looks gnarly. So let's fix some of this because uh, I just naturally draw buff anatomy. So let's get some of those ribs showing going down the sternum. And show through there. Let's not get thick lats back there. Let's get nice and thin through the rib cage. And then painfully wasp skinny there. And then let it flare out again for the pelvis. Just generally let his whole thing look super painful, this poor thin shade. Uh, I fucking love drawing. <laughs> this is so fun. I'm sorry. Oh, it's just... Uh, I mean, if you've never, if you've never tried this, just like sitting and problem solving and trying to look for design solutions to thing, I mean, this is the jam right here. I can't tell you just uh, <laughs> how on fire with uh, pleasure my mind is right now. God, I love this. Oh, what a thing to be able to do. And there's a few things more fun than just being like thicker body thinner body and just like trying to exercise all of the little things you've been subconsciously noticing about people's body types your whole life you know it's such a fun part of drawing Just like people have such like wildly varied bodies, you know? People are like completely top heavy, completely bottom he heavy, completely middle heavy. Uh, huge heads, tiny heads, thick arms with skinny legs, thick legs with like nothing there arms. Just like the variety in the manifestation of the human being is just, uh, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful, it's amazing. So much fun to draw. My joy brings you joy. I'm glad. It's uh, it is intense. It's uh, it's extremely joyful to um. To create things, and to make things out of nothing. And to spend any amount of time just um. Sort of recapitulating the. Uh, the most miraculous uh, truth of anything in the universe, which is that there's anything at all. I'm just uh, looking at blank pieces of paper, digital canvas, and turning them from nothing into, oh, there's something, and you can't, now you can't see it as anything but something, and you insist it's there, and it's real, and haha, it's just an illusion, and oh, yes! So good! So weird! I love it. So I'm gonna try to wrap this rib cage more like, I don't like this. It's like making that chest look too, that bop there to that bop there. 
is making them look too like ripped, like there's too much mass on the rib cage. So I'm gonna try to just find a way to wrap the shapes just clean like that. So it looks like the pecs are just like really stuck to the ribs, like there's nothing there. Include that arm behind the chest then in order to make the rib cage feel nice and thin. traps go down and up more. To make them look extra thin. I'm also going to try to design some groups of shades as well. It's like I'm trying to hash out my thoughts just on solos right now, but um, my plan is to actually, you know, for the for the concepts that are actually sent to be um, modeled, like stuff that we actually want to get into the scene, those are going to be designed as groups so that they're not just like a scattering of individually considered shades but instead they're all kind of interacting with each other
Come on now. What's wrong? There you go. Sticky note says, oh my god, is that Steven from Steven's About Art? It is. It's me. It me! I'm here doing what I always do. I'm drawing. The only difference is that I'm doing it live on the internet. Yes, I'm doing it live online. Step right up, step right up to the freak show. Come see the boy who thinks anyone's interested in seeing him draw. Step right up, step right up. Plenty of room. on this guy. Hey, can I ask you guys um, what uh, what resolution the stream is available for you to watch it in? I was uh, also with this stream, I was testing if I could stream in 4K, and I don't know if I did it right. Okay, Max. All right, good. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. That is super cool. Glad I can do it. That's cool. Glad. I, I had wanted to uh, do it before, but um, it's probably something I can only do out here. I get gr not the case at uh, at my place. So um, probably a, f a fun time just for now. Should take advantage as much as I can. Sean says 1080 only? Hmm. I wonder why only for you, only 1080. Might be something with your connection, since others are seeing the 4K. to do some separate focused design work on like these uh, faces because uh, this is way too regular for me I want to say like it's just it's just first reaction you know it's like a skeletal ish kind of anatomy face for a emaciated shade and it's just like yeah yeah I mean it works you know it's a it's a classic way to interpret it but I can come up with something new you just got to put in the time to do it. I could also just leave it to Geo. He's fantastic at uh, coming up with interesting and original anatomical face shapes. So he could always save my ass there.
to ear or not to ear? That is the question. Really strong, having too much fun, it's getting overwhelming. Gotta ride the wave. It's all right, keep it cool, Steven. It's hard when I'm on stream. It's like, uh, I mean, you know, I'm gonna, I don't wanna just like go away. When I get too pumped when I'm just drawing on my own, I get to like, uh, jump around the room and do some karate moves and stuff like that, but not here. Karate lessons? Maybe someday. Once I've refined my my totally made up karate moves. I'll hit you with them. I'm just gonna simplify all this because I made it too complex and I really just need it to that is more important than any of the correct and anatomical stuff that would be happening here. It's like whatever. What's more important is that he feel like he has a really thin neck and all that. Will the shading course include tips for digital? Um, it's not specific. It's I don't have anything in there right now that's specifically for digital, but it's also not, there's not much that's specifically for traditional either. It's like um, base concepts that will, um, that will apply to anything. It's like for me, when I'm rendering stuff digitally, I don't do any specifically digital moves or anything like that. Like I just, um, I think of what I'm doing digitally the same way I think about traditional stuff. The only thing that changes is that I just have more leeway with um, like value shapes and stuff like that. It's like I would do all the same things traditional except that um, for a lot of it I would briefly pause to take a sharp breath knowing that I was uh, committing to something that was gonna take like a uh, nine hours to pull off whereas in digital i would do it in two seconds you know if i wanted to create if i wanted to create this in a pencil drawing that was going to be a finished pencil drawing um even like using as many shortcuts as i can muster it's going to take me an hour to create it's gonna take me an hour at least to create that gradation with a nice flat tone in a way that doesn't botch the rest of the drawing, you know? But the principles are all the same.
The striations. The malnourishment. It's... It's too good. Lot to think about, lot to think about. Lot of design stuff to resolve. Notice that I didn't go for this because the colors haven't happened, which made me need that to make it not feel like a sculpture. If I color these guys just like I colored him, they're gonna look too much just like regular bronze statues, is my guess. So I probably want some sort of effect to make it look like they're somewhat ethereal, but not completely ethereal. Like you could still sculpt some of this, you know? Let's look for something a little more beat up. Let me make some notes here. What do I have so far? I have classical, elderly. Then we could do one that's specifically young, like a young teenager or something. We need to do female variants. And we need to do... Um, I want to try heavy, uh, whatever's going on here. I don't know what you want to call that, but dismemberment, breaking off, heavy modification. I don't want to put a word that's going to like condition my thinking about it too much. Um, heavy, messy uppiness. That should keep me from clinging to too much.
do I have to leave crop pixel on? Leave that off. No, have a little more room. I should also start looking at groupings pretty early or else, um, you know, I, I know there's going to be some opportunities in groupings to do, um, there's going to be opportunities in looking at the groupings to find interesting design ideas there, I know. So I don't want to go too long without looking at groups of them moving together. Because that's going to make me have, I just know that's going to make me have different thoughts about body types and variations and interactions and things like that. I'm going to look at some of my more heavily beat up references here. She lost the ball. <laughs> Whoops. I hear my dog barking out there. Who knows what she's on about? If anyone's got any questions, just let me know. Since I was thinking about um, sketching some groups, I'm also opening up to making some indications of the uh, of the environment that they're in. So I'm just gonna like vignette in a little bit of stone, just so that I start thinking about what I'm gonna want that to be. I haven't really thought about that much. Um, I, I know from the thinking I've done about the project previously, just basically that um, because the windswept shades are near this area, I want to base the geology on a sort of Aeolian erosion-based erosion. So like hoodoos and stuff like that, but it's gonna take like a, its own research pass for me to learn a little more about. But I do wanna start indicating some of that over there.
Ooh, what's that thing? Drum Helen Alley. Oh, those things look cool. They look pretty cool. Sorry, I'm, I got distracted. I'm looking at hoodoos real quick. Not made by wind erosion. Frost wedging. So it makes them a Bryce Canyon. Rain is another weathering process that causes them. Caused by acidic rain. Yeah, maybe that's not the right thing. But they sure look cool, and they look like they're eroded by the wind, so I'll have to do a little bit of thinking about that. Xander says, finally made progress on my build. Good, good. Good to hear that. I'm having a very hard time figuring out my process and finishing my works. Any tips? Um, keep trying. I mean, everyone's process, like, your process is supposed to be um, a little hard to figure out for yourself. Um, no, no two, like, mature artists have the same process. You know, that's part of the thrill. That's part of the fun. So uh, don't, don't think that, like, anything's going wrong because of that ivory black like you are supposed to be on a journey where you're eventually going to arrive at your own weird way of doing things you know it's totally natural so it's perfectly fine keep exploring um try things all the time switch mediums switching mediums is really one of the big things for me i don't know if it will be for you but um moving back and forth between digital pencil watercolor gouache sculpting like that has been a, a big part of me figuring things out for myself because it has made clear to me by seeing what worked for me and what didn't in a variety of mediums that made clear to me what part of my interest was actually present in every medium no matter what the change in the working process was. So that was a big part of me realizing that, oh, what I love is form, you know? Um, because that's what was getting me interested in every individual medium, no matter how different it was. So try that. That will help you highlight, at least for me, it helped me highlight a lot of um, what I actually thought was interesting. And then once you have stuff like that, like lean into it, you know, try to find ways to keep that thing that you love uh, interesting all throughout your pieces. Like, for me, one of the things that makes it hardest to finish a piece is um, if I gave away my favorite part too early, you know? Like, it really drains my energy to know that, um, again, for me, this is a, an example that's specific to me. It's going to be different for everyone. But because I love form, if I gave away all the form at the beginning... Um, I'm going to have a hard time finishing the piece because uh, I already saw my favorite part. So it has stolen uh, a lot of the energy that I have to see that piece through. So if I know that a piece wants to be carefully developed and refined, the easiest way for me is going to be to hold off on my favorite thing so that no matter how much time I've spent on it, my brain is still going like, oh, I, I want to see the form. I want to see the form. When are we going to see 
what it looks like when it's for me. Like it'll it'll stick around for my interest will stick around for a long time if that hasn't been um, figured out yet. So I will abuse that and use that to my advantage. So if you're uh, if you if what you love about your process is uh, adding color, for example, you might not if you're trying to really finish and refine a piece, you might not want to slap full contrast color all over it and give away the whole color mood like as if it was a color script and then expect that you're still going to be interested in working the colors for 40 hours on top of that you know like you probably won't be it might be really hard to do that um, unless you're super interested in other parts of the process like form or details or stuff like that so you might in that case want to hold it off so that you have something to look forward to that you know when you've already put, if you've already put 20 hours of effort into this piece, but you've held off on adding the full contrast color, you've just kind of like washed it in there a little bit or even held it off completely, and you get bored at hour 25, you can know, all right, it's time to add in the color, and then boom, you feel like you just started the piece at hour 25, and then it gives you enough energy to go for another 30 hours or whatever. You can see here, just introducing things that I want to start thinking about. I'm going to add a couple of things I'm seeing to uh, my reference board here so I can look them up later. I really like the hoodoos and the some of them that you find they like they look like muscles you know so uh, the design of the things that I want to do to just really align with what I know is going to make me want to sink my teeth into it so going with it I need to do some more research though on accurate uh, rock formations that are created by aeolian processes because uh, I'm sure that there's some specific specific version I can find that has that sort of like super formy look um, made from wind erosion so that it's accurate to the environment of that area of hell. Because I don't want to go with a uh, like a very um, noisy, like grainy, like full of holes rock. I want something smoother. This is all art direction stuff. When you do your own personal projects, you gotta be your own art director. It's a good thing to start getting comfortable with.
Avery Black, I hope that that, uh, that little rant that I went on had something in there for you about, uh, about how to switch up your process or understand your process a little better. You know, I'm not really doing a design drawing of this rock to like figure out the form language that I want to present for these things, but this is sort of, you know, just throwing it in here with the shades sort of becomes just a first study of these references so that I can start getting them into my bones, you know? Depending on, you know, if you were doing this for work, you might have to be much more careful about what you're throwing into each sketch because you might confuse your AD by suddenly including the rocks when they're only trying to look at the characters. But uh, that's the great thing about designing for yourself. You know, you're not confused about anything that you're doing, so you can sort of move with incredible rapidity and improvisation into any part of the process that you are interested in at any moment. Glad I could help, Ivory. So yeah, you can see some idea of these kinds of rock shapes where they get these flat tops that I like because they let you like emphasize a direction. So it's like you can imagine if you had a whole scene of those guys, you could just push those tops all pointing the same way and then that will really emphasize that the wind is going in this direction, right? Even if that's not actually the case of how these things geologically form, you know, you never, I, I'm not a, smart enough about physics or geology. Who knows? It might be that the wind actually uh, is blowing the other direction to make them take this shape. But I think on a read for a regular person, that is say not a geologist, um, it would probably be interpreted as the wind is going that way. So that would be a really good way to emphasize the wind element that is so strong in this scene in Dante's Inferno. And then, yeah, I love that these things have shapes like this area right here, where instead of being classic rock, eh, 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 all these like noisy, grainy things that I just hate rendering, uh, instead of being that all the time, it's got these nice, softer, smoother shapes that are just so fun to draw. Do you have any thoughts on, Damien says, do you have any thoughts on training your brain um, to coming up with original ideas? I often feel my work gets too cliche too quickly. Uh, you don't need to, you don't need to really train your brain. It's just research. Like, um, no one has ever had an original thought. Not truly, you know, like you're conditioned and multi-determined by everything around you. Um, original thoughts, I mean, you can literally just rip 
a visual idea directly from just only five people have ever seen this Wikipedia page and hardly anyone knows this is a thing, but you did the research and you found it, uh, guess what? That's original. You put that into your design. It's, it's not going to be cliche. It's going to stand out to people, but um, you really don't have a, a prayer in hell of uh, making up, um, no pun intended, you don't have a prayer in hell of making up anything more interesting than the absolute madness that occurs in nature. Like, the stuff that's happening in life is already, like, the most psychedelically impossible, unfathomable mystery of absolute chance, perfection, and reason. Just steal it. Just swipe it, you know? Just get lost in your research and find things that you find really compelling and interesting and put them in your work. That's all it takes. If you sit there forever hoping that you're just going to ugh, like, oh, I'm gonna do it, just gonna mm, burrow down inside of myself and find an original deal idea. Like what are you nuts? Like who do you think you are? You think you're uh you think you're Picasso or uh, or William Blake or something like that? Like not even they had original ideas. They were remixing things and reacting to things, you know? It's just a huge waste of effort to <laughs> get caught up thinking in that it's all good research that's where I, that's where cool original ideas come from The, o the only part of it that would be like training your brain to do that would be like training your brain to research well. That's the, that would be the training part. And to recognize uh, cool things when you encounter them on your research. But that comes naturally. I think as you like get lost in your research and encounter odd things, you just sort of a, you get a taste for it yourself. And it doesn't feel like it's not original. You know, a lot, I, I hear that from students sometimes that it's like, oh, if that's really all it is, like, a, you know, it'll never quite feel like me. It's like, no, it does. You just haven't gone deep enough. You know, you haven't um, gone down the rabbit hole of those research avenues enough because when you do find that thing, that is like, oh my God, that's real. That's a real thing already. And you um, realize that you've never seen any art that really like has that in it. And you were the one who had the Google food to find it. It does feel original. It does feel like you, like you did it, so. And it is because other, another artist would find that and not react to it you know it's still you it's like the subcon the subconscious part of you is reacting to that thing for a reason like that's really where your originality comes in your originality comes in at what you found to be cool you know another artist might find that same thing and be like that's not interesting but you saw what was special in it and what was applicable in it Max says, I'm really glad you mention Blake as often as you do. He's awesome, and I don't ever see anyone else talking about him. He is awesome. He really is awesome. He's, uh, he's one of my favorites. One of my true favorites. And uh, one of the things that makes him one of my favorites is that just, like, you, you would never... You would never tell someone, like, draw like him, right? Like, now. Like, you would never tell someone, like, oh, look at Blake, aspire to draw like him. Like, you would never do that now. But, um, damn, he did some of the best drawings ever, you know? 
Whereas on the other hand, you know, we're constantly looking at other people being like, yeah, draw like them, draw like them. You want to draw like them? It's like, you sure? You sure? Is that really what it's about? Sure? You sure it's about drawing like other people? You are welcome, Damien. You are welcome. I, I labeled this one to be an abstract shade, but uh, it really did not happen. It just wound up being a, a little study of really what one of these little pillars can be like. But, you know, probably not one shade on top of one of these uh, windswept pillars. But um, actually, maybe you could get that down up close so that when you're looking at it in VR, you know, if this is the guy I'm just drawing and you're, the, you're here in the scene with the VR headset, you can see him pretty up close and check out some details. But then behind him, there's similar plateaus with varied shapes, Stephen. You find new ways to do that same idea without repeating it over and over again. And, uh, you know, this one has many shades. all in different poses. Help. Dante, please, Cheetos. Did you bring any Cheetos from the overworld? Please. No, not Cheetos. No, oh, I'll rip your hair right out of your head. Not Cheetos, please. Funyuns, Funyuns from the overworld. Please, Dante, don't listen to them. They're, they're obsessed with junk food. They suck. Kale, Dante. Do you have any kale? My tongue, it craves kale. Please, is that what kale looks like? I don't know. So you can imagine some sort of a, we're gonna have to go through and like design the whole, that's the thing about this. We gotta design the pieces and then I need to go through and design like the experience of how you traverse this environment, which thank goodness this is not my first rodeo for that. So yeah, I kind of forgot about the abstract thing and now I'm just liking this drawing. Did my pocket eyebrows there. Let's get some woeful eyebrows.
I like to imagine Dante has a stash of cliff bars he shares with Virgil as they traverse through hell. Yeah, cliff bars. That's the ambrosia of the gods right there. That's the mana. Hello, yeah, I don't know, life. What's up? You still streaming? I am. Mm -hmm. What about you? What are you doing? I'm just going to talk to my dude. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. You're going to do it here? You want me to go outside? How long do you have to talk? Yeah. A few minutes. Would you mind going outside? anyone has any questions just let me know contrasty in the shadows. I'm just gonna unify a lot of this. Oh. Dang, it's only three o'clock. So what?
I love getting lost in this uh, initial research and exploration phase of a project. This is the most fun right here. I need to look about, talk to Geo about hair look dev. So I don't, since I don't know what our hair limitations might be, it might be easiest to just not have anyone have hair. <laughs> just trying not to abandon any of these drawings too early you know there's really only so far I need to go to get the idea for myself but because I'm so excited for this project and it's so clearly it is so directly aligned with my personal interests It, um, I'm just trying to give every drawing a uh, plenty of time. Not that, you know, half hour is really plenty of time for a complex drawing, but just uh, pushing a little further than just what I need for me to get it so that they all have a chance to then unravel some of their surprises and lessons that can inform other drawings. Because inevitably you stay with a drawing long enough, it's going to like surprise you with something. It's going to give you a new idea. Is it truly dollar shade, my friends? Truly that. A little bit of a white bump. 
Sinocephalus says, nice to see your process. You are an inspiration of the kind of level I want to acquire as an illustrator. Oh, that is extremely kind of you to say. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I am sure that you will surpass me. Go beyond. That is the big meta goal of us as illustrators, as artists. We're trying to lay strong foundations so that the art of the generations to come is stronger, greater, more powerful, more moving, more easeful, more beautiful. Be sure to give me a good kick on your way up to the heights of Art Mountain. Leave me in the dust. So that's a for a for a first study of a sort of these shades interacting with a, what I imagine the environment could look like. I think that's a decent little beginning there. It begins to have that discussion of them being perched up on these uh, this very particular form of geologic rock formation. Oh, does he look dolorous enough? He needs more pain. More agony. Oh, God, here I am. In hell. Really? Oh, no. God, doomed forever to this tangled shore of pain and misery. I should have drawn more while I had the chance. Damn it, I was too scared and now I'm dead. I lost the opportunity to make that sick comic book I always had in mind. Fuck. Oh, truly woeful. That's it, man. That's going to be all of us. That is going to be all of us. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Now let's look at... Now let's try to stay on track and look at some more abstract... Uh, a more abstract idea. I don't want to stop looking at everything I have on the page, but I'm running out of room here. So I would say probably I'm going to look at abstract and then I should look at oh, look at abstract. I should probably look at some possible groupings and then after looking at groupings, I should probably look at the windswept versions cuz that's going to be at least half of the ones that are in the scene, actually probably more than half of what's in the scene.
I actually don't think the when I say abstract I mean that they're like missing a lot of their parts like an old broken statue and these I actually don't think would be um, I actually don't think these would be in the scene because um, most of the shades in the scene because it's a uh, right at the first levels of hell these are new shades that are waiting to be judged like i imagine that these really broken ones are shades that have been in hell for an extremely long time since there was man to be doomed But I think it's a good idea to investigate all the ideas that I have for how these guys will vary throughout the story early, because you never know, I might bump into while exploring that some, it might make me realize that there's something I would need to put into their complete designs to set up for that. It's like in the end, you would never be able to know those things truly until you've sort of done the, sort of prepared everything in the project. And then you can go back to the first things and edit it so that it looks like you knew what you were doing the whole time, as Neil Gaiman puts it. In that one ad I've seen for his masterclass. Hi, MK. What's up? All right. Sonosif Alice says, may I ask for a little advice on how to handle a bit of frustration? What would do if, after having a kind of decent period, you suddenly start to go down for some time? Not just a bit worse, but like, I'm not even getting proportions or line work right. This is garbage and feel like you are losing the, losing the touch. I had a period like that more or less recently, and I don't know what to take from such a sudden botch. Um, don't worry about it. If I can give you any advice on that from someone who's been doing this for a very, very long time, there is not an artist on this planet who more and more practice and time and dedication and um, effort put in made them worse. That doesn't happen. What does happen is that as you learn more and improve more, you become more and more aware of how far from the mark you're falling. So even though your skills are improving, your understanding of where you sit in your abilities is improving faster and you are becoming more and more critical of yourself. So you kind of get this vicious up and down thing where you feel like you're regressing or going backwards, but uh, it's actually a sign of improvement and an increase in wisdom. So just ride it out, ride that wave, feel the pain, let the, uh, the dark veil of misery wash over you and just don't quit there is a success on the other side. Really for everything, um, really for every hard part of the artistic journey, there is success on the other side. You need only ride it out. And the more of those periods you ride out, the more and more success is lurking on the other side uh, by necessity, because you are not special, none of us are. And um, everything that you're going through, every other artist goes through. So what that means is that every time you encounter a period of difficulty that makes you feel like, oh no, do I need to quit? Every other artist feels that, and that's when people quit. So if you get through it, the field has been thinned by half every time you get through one of those periods. And it gets thinned by half again on the next one, and then 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 the next one. Until eventually, you know, 50 years later, you're a master, and there's only a thousand of you alive at one time. You just gotta ride it out.
want to make these legs not so exactly mirrored. Actually, look better before. Is it better to fall in? Is it better to fail in originality or to succeed in imitation? Uh, depends on your goals. If you, uh, if the most important priority that you have with your art right now is to, for example, feed your family and uh, you refuse to have any other kind of job, then you'd better succeed in imitation. And uh, you've made a big mess up if you fail in originality when that's what's on the line. So it just depends on your priorities. try to bend this guy in some weird way. Of course, he's going the exact same way as all the other figures. Let's have his chest jutting outward instead of curling under. Damien says, now I'm excited to get frustrated. Yeah, I'm on. That's what it's all about. I mean, you'll see it. You know, it's nothing like, it's nothing like Hocus Pocus or like, uh, or like The Secret or anything like that. Um, you will see as you are on the journey longer and longer that like, every time you're just like at your most depressed like i'm ready to quit who on earth would do this like i'm done with this um i'm ruining my life i'm ruining my family's life like this sucks like every time you go through one of those periods and then go like all right whatever i'm just gonna keep doing it and you stick it out like a week later you'll get what you needed and you know it, <laughs> it it's easy at moments like that to be like, oh my God, like the universe is watching, the secret is real, the law of attraction, I, I am the font of the universe. It's like, it's not that. It's just that everyone goes through that. And when you don't give up at those points, there's just less competition and the energy's moving towards you. And yeah, that's what happens. Don't quit. These legs are too regular to work with. How old the body is. Or how distorted the body is. Start punching things out of the silhouette. 
going to have to start designing those negative shapes super carefully to be interesting. imply a little more anatomical detail on this guy to maybe try to make the cracks seem odder. Boop, 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 boo doo. A shade who has been around. So that's the other good thing about um, if I can manage to find a way to do these guys like this where they're sort of like as if they're made of copper or some sort of inorganic material. Um, then we can do all of these kinds of breaks without it being gore, right? Like there's nothing gory about a statue being broken off with like cleaving. It can just be clean breaks. Shade who has been around a long time. shapes like that. Having it be black in those holes was kind of making it read like bloody, the local color change. So just gonna put a little form on them. That's the way they feel a little bit more like cloven rock. Cloven? Cleaved? 
this is definitely something that is part of a would need to be part of a careful process of look development you know geo and i would need to uh, refine and discuss if that would really be how we want to go but um that's an idea i've had for a long time uh an idea that i it's an idea i've played with a lot of my pencil drawing because um yeah it's just really appealing to me how when you're um you can if something is a statue or made of stone which is like technically anything could be that if you're doing a pencil drawing right like without color um even like a very realistically rendered figure could you could just say it's actually a statue and you know it would kind of work except for big local color changes so it's always been fascinating to me sort of the things that you can get away with on a statue which would actually be like have a completely different emotional impact on a real body and obviously if you're gonna have gore anywhere Dante's Inferno is where it's gonna be appropriate right and uh, Doré's illustrations for it certainly have gore but um, so I'm not opposed to gore just as such um, on principle but um, it could be a little unexpected and also just you know if something is without gore it's of course much more flexible Damn, you throw in shade, you know it. You know it, Eric Tran. So yeah, hopefully if I do that, and that kind of implies a little bit that uh, it's not just like straight. Um, it's not like just straight gaping flesh stuff. It's actually... Uh, It's like how a statue breaks off a little bit. Having a crack turn the corner always sells that. And I think that this is uniquely possible in our project because I don't think we're animating it at all. So because you're going to be moving towards through sort of like a diorama, at least that's what we're thinking right now. Um, it's not like if these figures were like had these like stony cleavings and stuff like that, and then they started animating, it'd be super expensive to like get the weights right so that those cleaves don't deform oddly. But if it's a diorama where you're just sort of moving through this frozen scene, um, that's not a problem. Then it can just work. Uh, because it's designed for each individual pose. We got some pretty fully put together shades, classical type, maybe a little more elderly, heavier type, very thin type, some indication of their interaction with the environment, some idea of uh, when they've been around for a very long time, how do they change, like do these guys go through an arc? And in this case, I think a shade who is not troubled by a particular thing, like I don't think shades that, for example, are caught in a tempest for all of eternity, I don't think they would um, age this way. But this is more just like a general idea, like their aging can affect their appearance and they become more and more broken and lost and just not themselves, you know, their consciousness dims and they become something else perhaps. Um, and then we can make modifications for each kind of shade who is tortured by a different sort of thing.
Do do do. I'm going to try a couple things on these guys. Push this closer to blue. Divine Comedy has scenes of people being sawed off, regenerating because they are immortal, and then saved again. It's the most gore stuff. It truly is. There, it is definitely appropriate for there to be gore in um, in the Divine Comedy. I would never pull that punch just because... Um, I would never pull that punch just because, ooh, gore. You know, like, I have nothing against that. Um, I would consider it instead if there was some new way to get that across that felt thematically relevant, you know, if it was like a real design solution. It's like, I draw gross stuff all the time, I don't care. But I'm also totally open to finding a solution that if it doesn't hurt it thematically, and it's still you like you don't need to change the story right like there can still be people like there's people in the inferno who are tortured by just like you know their chests are opening up and stuff like that if you can still do that if you don't have to lose that but it's just that now when that is opened it's like it is more like um as if you opened a marble or a bronze sculpture and just like the way that cracks and breaks instead if you do that and you can make that beautiful and you can still do all of that and it's thematically relevant because um, you know these shades are no longer organic, or they're they are slowly ossifying and becoming something eternal, and you know their life is not there's no variety in their life now. There's no change, um, and at the same time, that's also going to happen to make it more likely that people are not going to throw up when they are actually walking through this thing at scale in VR. I can see the case. I can see. you find the statue concept interesting yeah we'll see 
we will see if it, if we can make it work we can make it work i mean i you know obviously there's got to be discussions about it and we got to see if we uh, we both agree on it me and my partner so There is really a, a huge variety of ways to handle this. It would also be a way cheaper shader to develop than uh, super high quality skin shaders that will hold up in VR. Would be much less taxing on the system. So you can see I'm testing out the uh, bronze metallic look on this guy here. Working very high contrast here to communicate the feeling of metal. Looking at my poo poo secondary monitor, which has my OBS feed, 
trying to balance the values based on that because my main monitor is really good and most people don't have really good monitors so if I make something that looks great on my monitor but looks bad on poo poo monitors well that was uh, not the most efficient choice so I always like to balance off of my less good monitor it always encourages me to push the contrast and stuff like that gets slightly more garish than is my inclination I generally tend to work more washed out Should be workable as a base. Now by contrast, this guy doesn't look metallic at all because he's got the very metallic looking uh, figure right next to him. Might get a couple more really hot ones that are super aggressive. That go like have the nice hard edge to soft edge thing. It's fighting a little bit against our uh, man boob situation that we wanted there. But it's so hard to resist getting the the material. It says all specular reflections are freaking good for is getting the material. shiny around the contour there.
got a little too loud down here. But I'll leave that. I like that. God, I love drawing. This is so fun. <laughs> oh my god, I fucking love drawing. All right. Here we go. Indication of it there. Now, this is really specific kind of a thing for me to do. You know, like an old man at that extreme head angle looking as if he's made of copper or bronze. It's like... <laughs> That's uh, that's just about stretching my ability to work from imagination. So uh, I'm not gonna sweat this too much. I'll, if I want to sell this one, I need to go find a good ref, a very specific reference. I'm sure that whatever I make up here is either gonna look just like it's bronze, but not be feel quite like the pose or I'll nail the structure of the head at that angle, but I'll lose the bronze or copper uh, material. Quinting while I do this. Try to get an idea of where I need to adjust the contrast. Yo, Exidium. What's up? What is up, Exidium?
Whoa. Hmm, that did not bake the way that I wanted to. It's 2020 and I still haven't made an interesting rendition of the Shrike. You gotta get on it, Exidium. Dreams be real. Achieve your goals. Get that Shrike going. What's up in Zapata Town? Nothing much, Exidium. Just working, working, working. Trying to find time for streaming and for working on the... Uh, these sorts of personal projects. Happy to be busy with work though, that's for sure. Finding time to make some drawing companions. Content and yeah, got more uh, got more side projects that I can six shake a stick at right now. But all of the big side projects are with uh, very interesting people that I'm super happy to be working with. So just trying to find time for those things. Do a paler one. Hmm, but that's right, I'm going over the gray background. Can't get too pale. Well, we'll take a look. Woo wee. All right, people. Well, uh, I've been going for a while here. We've been live for three and a half hours now, something like that. So I'm going to take a break in just a bit so please if you have any questions or anything like that you want me to answer before I go just let me know I need to go I've been staring unbroken at this giant flat light bulb for a while now and I'm gonna go out there and throw the ball for my dog for a little bit I think and I'll keep poking at this stuff
that should be lower opacity. Well, not really. It's going to take much more than just that to get the uh, true bronze feeling across. I need to go in there and do a lot of very particular painting. Good, I'm about to hop off, actually. Oh, too fanny for you. No problem, Exidium. Oh, I will. Can't wait to see more of this project. Me neither. I also can't wait. It's just that I have to actually draw it to see more. <laughs> for one like this if I made him like pale blue it's like I really shouldn't split the message like there's no common like sculptural material that really is that hue so if he's gonna be that hue it really shouldn't be like the statuish idea so I should either find a reason that he organically would be that shade or make it less blue and just make it more towards a pale white Oh, that actually gave me not a bad starting point there. Slightly step on that. Just all color drained out of him. Elder Shade has a good tan, yeah. I wish I could get that tan. Dude, how cool would it be if you could go stand in the sun and come out looking like you were a living bronze? It'd be dope. Everyone would do it. Post-human shit, man. I know I said I was going to get off, and now I'm getting caught up in the fun of drawing every time, every damn time. subtle color variation in here sort of pale color like very low saturation color things designs tend to benefit from nice subtle color variation it's like you want it to read as just that like one push back color from here but then you don't want it to be completely boring you want there to be a little bit of movement when you get up close and look in detail just so that there's some change, some something going on at different levels of viewing. Keeps it feeling alive. Trying to resist putting in uh, warm colors like this to set it off because I don't want to. Um, He's dead. He's a shade. I don't want there to be a lot of warmth available to him. So, leaning towards varying with uh, like greens and yellows, pale lemon yellows. Bit 
been reading Ilium by Dan Simmons if you need some good post-human shit and lots of connections to Greek classics. That sounds good. Sounds worth a check out. Seems thematically relevant, my friend. That's an okay start for a color idea on that guy. Oops. All right, people, I'm going to hop off. Thank you all for hanging out with me while I drew today. Hope uh, you got something out of any questions answered or a little bit of inspiration or some insight into uh, how you can design stuff like this and different ways to turn things around in your head. I am going to go now and briefly be a not drawing person before I am inevitably again a drawing person. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care and have a good rest of your weekend. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks for hanging out.